Good morning, Moms of Master Books. Uh, hope you're having a fantastic day. Hey, today I'm here with author Jake McCulley. He also speaks around the country at um, homeschool conventions. I think you speak at churches, right, Jake? Do you also yeah. speak at in public schools? That's right. I've been in a couple public schools recently. Yeah. So um, you you travel and and spend quite a bit of time talking about the Constitution and civics that we're talking about today. Um, let me let me start with, can you just talk a little bit about um, who you are and how you got into this ministry that you're in? Absolutely. Well, thank you, Larry, for having, or Randy, for having me on the show here today. And it's a pleasure because I think homeschool moms are the heroes. Uh, I mean, forget the Avengers. Uh, you guys are the ones redeeming and saving this planet. So thank you for all that you do. Uh, I am a homeschooling father, which basically means I'm a principal and I deal with discipline. Uh, <laughs> and once in a while I help with mathematics. But we developed a civics course a, a while back when I was 17, and this was over 20 years ago. I uh, went through a program called Minnesota Teen Challenge. I was a pretty troubled teenager uh, growing up and got in quite a bit of trouble. And that is where Christ met me and changed my life. And I've been a Christian ever since. I've read my Bible and I've prayed every single day. It was a miraculous transformation in my life. And I want to tell everybody about Jesus. So my first thought was, is kids have to go to school. So let's go reach them in school. I had no idea there was a cultural war uh, going on in America. I just thought Christians were geeks and nerds. And why would I want to be one of those? They don't have any fun. Uh, so when I went into the school to tell kids about Jesus, we got in a lot of trouble. And it was very puzzling and shocking to me because, again, I'm a counterculture kid. I had never heard of separation of church and state. I thought everybody that was good was Christian and wanted everybody else to be Christian. So, anyways, engaging in that culture war and getting frustrated and upset because here I was trying to bring a good message to young people, uh, a biblical message, one that transforms lives and, and helps kids from suicide to drug use to relationships to uh, sexual promiscuity and so on. I was calling them out of that, but I was getting in trouble. And so I started studying things like separation of church and state and the constitution, because they would throw all these things at me and I was not prepared. I had no idea. And as I studied men like George Washington, James Madison, or more importantly, our pilgrim forebears that came to these United States and how they established for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith that says in the Mayflower Compact, it's why they came. These were people like me. They wanted to proclaim the gospel and have a whole nation of peoples that would glorify and honor him and spread the gospel throughout the world. It was eye-opening and shocking. Because here I was getting in trouble for something that supposedly was so. But as Joshua Billings said, it's not what a man doesn't know that gets him in trouble. It's what he knows for certain. It just is not so. Separation of church and state is only to keep government out of church affairs. But government is accountable to God. And we teach the American view at the Institute on the Constitution, which comes straight out of the Declaration of Independence. Number one, the American view says that there is a God. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men are created. They're endowed by their creator. So our rights come from God. So number one, there is a God. Our rights come from him. We're endowed by our creator with unalienable rights to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. So quintessentially, the American view that we teach and that I feel uh, is essential for our young people to learn and our old people and everybody serving in office is number one, there is a God. Number two, our rights come from him, not government, not the Constitution, not lawyers, not judges. They come from God. Number three, the purpose of civil government is simply to secure those God-given rights. So government is God's servant so that we can proclaim the gospel, so that we can act rightly, morally, and exist in a nation that has freedom. Two, how? Glorify God by perpetuating that system. That's awesome. So my contention with the homeschool, not contention, but my um, uh, strong conviction with the homeschool culture for a, a lot of years and why I'm so committed to it is I believe throughout history, 
whenever there was a generation that was significant, meaning something significant was going to come in this generation, whether it was a generation of Moses or Jesus um, or even right now in this generation, uh, you tended to see an attack on the lives of children. You, you know, all the male babies in Moses' day were slaughtered. In Jesus' day, the male babies were being slaughtered. Um, and now in this day, we see millions of babies being slaughtered. We also see the, um, the intellectual killing of our children, if you will, where there, there's so much of an agenda to remove faith from this generation. And I, I've always held that um, homeschooling is a grassroots revival. There's a remnant that God has set aside. And I feel so blessed that our kids are part of this remnant. Because I feel that this generation, whatever it is that, that's to come, they have such a significant part to play. And it doesn't mean that there's not going to be huge challenges for them because there always is, right? When God calls a generation, there's a challenge. When I first got, um, I, Angela O'Dell is the one who called me and said, hey, you really need to look at Jake's uh, materials. I think she met you at a convention. Is that right? That's right. Yep. And, um, the, and, of course, Angela shares a lot of that same passion for the homeschool movement and, and as well. Um, but when I first saw your, your talk, it really stood out to me the same thing. This was more of a very purposed, um, intentional course. And your talks were much more intentional. You were, you were trying to impart some purpose to the student. Um, would you would you agree with that, or how do you yeah. how would you address that? I was just discussing this. Our founder uh, ran for president in 2004. His name was Michael Anthony Perutko, and uh, we were just discussing yesterday because I've traveled all over the country. We have chapter leaders for our courses. Actually, adults teach these, churches teach these, political groups teach these, uh, individual groups teach these. Some public school uh, schools teach our course, our curriculum. And one of the big differences that they say, because there is, you know, there's a half dozen that I'm aware of civics courses out there. And I, I don't even need to put them down. They share wonderful information, but they are not intentional. This is what I'm told. And I find it to be true when I study. They're not intentional about those biblical values and biblical underpinnings. They say, well, this is the culture that we're in today. So this is what we need to learn. I do not find that, biblically speaking. And I am a religious zealot, but I also know how to be palatable. As I said, I'm invited into public schools from time to time. So I know how to speak this without, you know, browbeating. And frankly, that didn't work for me either. One of the big statements that we say around here is don't get too far ahead of your audience. You know, because then all you're doing is puffing up your own ego. So bringing people step by step to the historicity of the document of the Declaration of Independence, for example, our founding fathers, and I say this with all my presentations, were not Jesus. Uh, the Republican Party is not Jesus. Ronald Reagan is not Jesus. Our salvation is not found in politics. Donald Trump, in everything that he, he can do as president, will not turn this country around. The only thing the government can do is get out of this business, and for us as a people, to exalt God. Otherwise, we're trading tyranny on our own terms. You know, if our party gets elected, that party gets elected. Mm -hmm. And forgive me, that, there was a lot in what I just said, and I, I don't have time to fillet that, but we are very intentional about the fact that God is sovereign. So if we go to the American view again, there is a God. I believe that. You believe that, Randy. Most of you watching this, probably all of you, believe that there is a God. But you know what? Our founding fathers believed that and staked their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor on the fact that there was a God and it was not a king. It was not a political system. Mm -hmm. It was a God. And then their rights came from that God. There's a higher power. Adolf Hitler's men were following orders, but they were hung at Nuremberg because there was a higher law. And it was called the law of nature and nature is God. And that is codified and written in American law. So when it comes to arguing about an abortion ruling in 1973, which by the way, the courts can't make law, it says in the first sentence of the Constitution, that legislative authority is vested in Congress. Congress has never spoken on the issue. 
Our rights come from God, and that child in the womb was not born equal. They were created equal, according to our founding documents. And for they have the right to life, liberty, and property, and it is government's duty, not just before the people, but before God, who they swear an oath to, to uphold and defend the Constitution, to secure those rights. I, when I'm speaking to you right now, I speak in public schools, and I point right to the Declaration of Independence. It says it right there. I point right to the words of our founding fathers. They say it right there. There's an eternal, everlasting, and almighty God. There's future rewards and punishments. The political system was merely designed to protect God's creation, which is the same reason the law was created. It was to protect our right to life, thou shalt not murder. Our right to property, thou shalt not steal. Our right to have a family, a father and a mother, thou shalt not commit adultery. The right to not be perjured, you shall not bear false witness in court of law. So all of these concepts can be found and discovered relatively quickly. I'm not super smart. I was kicked out of school as a senior in high school. I did not need a secondary education to read our founding father's writings and realize <laughs> how far off we've gotten. And if your young person is learning civics and the way that it exists now, then I fear our trajectory is off course and we will never land where God intended us to. We should be studying how the document is written and championing and fighting for that cause because it is, as Thomas Jefferson penned, self-evident. Yes. It's all right. And I intend on educating people around the country so that we can see a resurgence of this. And I'm happy to say uh, we've got a lot of work to do because the public education system is is turning out soldiers like crazy, almost like uh, the Republic and the Return or the Empire Strikes Back <laughs> turned out their drones. Uh, but there is a resurgence happening right now. People getting a hold of these concepts because they're right. right. Whether you're an atheist or not, it does not matter. These concepts protect you. God-given rights exceed government rights. One of the things with Master Books, what we... I think what we excel at is application-based learning. And um, you had mentioned before, and I think this is something that we see a lot of curriculum companies mimic or copy the public education system in creating alternatives. And yes. they don't necessarily teach how to use the knowledge, they just teach the knowledge. So when they teach math, they don't bring it into the context of math is the language God uses to bring order to the universe. And as we discover math, we discover the consistencies and truths of God himself. It's the same in this case. What I saw is I was watching your lectures. The first lecture, you sold me on this, and I became a champion of this project here at the press. Um, you started talking right about the creator and his intention and Genesis and how important all of these things were to, um, to the study of this topic and then applying it to culture. And I think that applied knowledge of this um, even if you're listening in today and you hear Jake talking about it, you automatically start to think differently about the knowledge. So it's not just this is what the Constitution says, this is what the Second Amendment says. It's actually beginning, he does an excellent job of applying that knowledge and that content and applying it to the student's world today. And so my question is, as you've traveled around and you've spoken at homeschool conferences this year, I know already, what are some of the responses you're getting from parents after they've attended some of your, your lectures and that type of thing? What, what do you hear? Like, what is the hot buttons that, that they're speaking back to you? Uh, one of the things, and I do, I speak on a variety of different topics from being a homeschool father to being a rebel and a prodigal um, to the culture war to the history of education in America. But I will tell you a common theme is by the time, and you'll know this as mothers or fathers that are watching this, your student gets to high school, it can either be challenging or amazing. It depends on the student. <laughs> and one of the topics that is required to graduate now is civics. It always has been. You have to understand the way your government works before you start voting, and that's just common sense. Now, from that, it's a springboard. Parents will come up to me and say, wow, this information is amazing. Do you have it in a curriculum? And I kind of have to chuckle. Because I say, yeah, I've been talking about that for the last 45 minutes. Didn't you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> so, but I think they're enamored by the content and they're wanting to see this. One of the things that I appreciate about our partnership with Master Books is that when you create a product, you create a turnkey product. The last thing a mother wants 
is 12 hours of prep time mm -hmm. uh, every evening before they teach a subject. Let's face it, especially in our culture, and especially if you have more than one child, you're exhausted right now. You've thought about quitting three times this week. And so taking this curriculum and watching it teach itself for your students and watching the fact that, let's face it, most of us don't know much about this subject matter. We know enough to be dangerous, but we could all use a refresher course because we all fell asleep while they were teaching it in government school. Mm -hmm. So it can be taken together as a family. So when parents find out, number one, they can learn that this and the pressure is not on them because it's video driven. You literally just watch a video of me speaking. You follow along in the syllabus. You do the assignments and the homework, the daily lesson plan that saves your life because you can literally wake up in the morning and do it. Right. Uh, and then also the application. One of the things is, is parents will say, well, that's great. My, my student isn't super into this subject and maybe we can cram the information. But what about the application? Because in three, four years, if they've determined to go to university, depending on the university, they're going to get punched in the face by their professor. I wish I could say it's getting better. It's only getting worse. Uh, we are teaching the antithesis of what, I mean, you can call it whatever you want, leftists. I call it just a, a regular old anti-God agenda mm -hmm. because people think they're God and people develop political power. And what stands in front of them? God and his people. So we want to equip them with the tools to not only have knowledge but bring a practical application. In our curriculum, that is what we do. We don't just teach you about the three branches, we teach why the three branches. What was the philosophy behind that? How can the president be put in check by Congress? How can Congress, when they come up with something unconstitutional, be put in check by a veto from the president? How can the Supreme Court, who right now we look to as the oracle, tell us what it is, almighty Oz. The court has the least amount of power out of all three branches. They're just referees, like in a football game. They apply the rules. They can't create new rules. They can't say, hey, this team gets 10 downs now, and this team gets two because they're winning by so much. You would have an uprising in any stadium across the country. But that's what's happening in our culture. So how does a young person learn to defend against those? There's local jurisdictions of power. There's state jurisdictions of power. All of these were created to check and balance each other. And those things can happen, and we give practical, palpable, tangible applications in each lecture of how this does happen currently. It doesn't pick up a lot of mainstream coverage, and how it needs to continue to happen. And so that, those are the questions that we answer to the parent, and generally speaking, they're sold, because it keeps three things that they cherish. They're Christian biblical values. Mm -hmm. We're not inventing these and then inserting them into our curriculum. They existed before our curriculum in the founding documents. So we just merely teach them and emphasize them and stress them and pull them out wherever we possibly can instead of just glazing over, well, they were Christians, but here's where we're at now. No, they established this. Nothing has changed. We've just ignored. Secondly, how does how does have the energetic skills to go into a university or with their friends and speak logically and effectively and not just sound like some type of religious nut mm -hmm. by the way i love religious nuts but i'm just saying <laughs> uh, that along with how do i get a credit for this because at the end of the day i've got to get my kid through school is this a civics credit yes it's a civics credit and your whole family can benefit from this and how old does your student have to be my son graduated when he was eight years old uh, my next son he didn't really graduate. He kind of scribbled on the pages when he was a different type of learner. In America, we used to teach this topic. It was mandatory in middle school and then again in high school. So that's a question yeah. I have for you. <clears throat> um, well, I think one of the Kennedy families, he used to take newspaper articles or different topics. He'd cut them out and he'd put them on a dinner table for his family. And as they would sit and have dinner, they would read the article and then they would discuss it. And he used that as opportunities to shape worldview. And I think in the homeschool community, sometimes we take a topic like this and we wait until our students in 11th grade and give them the course. But we're shaping worldview. And, and so my question would be, 
for a mom who has a kindergartner or first grader and is just beginning homeschooling, do you think it'd be a good idea to get this course and, and even if it's just watching the videos and understanding the content, because as they go through history and, and all of the different, um, you know, uh, real world issues that we face, they'll be able to also shape worldview, but, but they have a better understanding. Do you think it'd be a good idea for the parent to take it first? I would say yes to that. And most of our students, honestly, uh, have been adults. We've graduated thousands throughout the country. Um, and then, of course, it trickles down to the students now because, again, you have to teach your children this subject. Mm -hmm. So, and I always tell mothers, you can let us teach it for you, or you can try to muscle through it. Um, but this curriculum, again, is turnkey. So when a younger student, we have raised our children this way. Um, when they were younger, they would memorize things like the Bill of Rights uh, or the preamble and so on. Because that young person is going to watch you watch the debates here coming up in 2020. They're going to see the campaign material. Right now we have a challenge for 2020. How many constitutional minded people can we raise up before the election so we put the right people in office that will defend the biblical view of government that our founding fathers gave to us? Those young people will pick up these terms and gosh, the sooner the better they need to. So I want to go back to your question and just answer it specifically. Parents, you will benefit from this course just as much, if not more, than your children will. Mm -hmm. This is taught in Bible studies in churches all over the country. Uh, Wednesday evening Bible studies, Sunday morning Bible studies, Monday night prayer groups, Tuesday night men's groups, Thursday night women's groups. It's taught in a lot of different uh, variations. And so I do encourage you to do that. And let me just say, I mean, we all feel as curriculum writers that, you know, ours is the most important. Ours is the most important. Here's why. What has happened? Miracles do not cluster. And Daniel Webster said this. What has happened once in 6,000 years, which proved he believed in creation, is not likely to ever happen again. Hold on to the Constitution, my dear friends. And again, he explains, this has happened once. This is a miracle. And it's not passed along in the bloodstream, just like Ronald Reagan identified. These things don't just happen. Your kids aren't just going to know the America that you know. Hmm. They're going to have to learn about it. So I heavily emphasize, take the time to do it. Because if their biblical view, if their worldview can be dismantled, and even if they have the right worldview, I've met a lot of, God bless them, wonderful Christians that don't vote. Uh, they don't think it's important to know these things. And again, voting is not the emphasis, it's walking it out. They don't think it's important to know these things. How do we think that liberty will be perpetuated? Again, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So them having a good understanding of this and having some depth to be able to contend with a professor or somebody who's contrary to um, this biblical view is so essential and important. Even if they don't run for political office, they're going to run businesses. They're going to be like the baker. In Colorado, Jack Phillips, who I've met personally, we're going to have, we're going to be put in that position, and it's business owners now recently that are put in the hot seat, and if you don't know your constitutional rights to defend them, we're going to buckle and we're going to keep seeing this resurgence of modern secularism. Yeah. I don't want to see that, so I want to work hard to eliminate that. Well, our kids are going to face culture head on. I mean, I, I say this a lot, but I, I believe our kids are going to face giants that we never envisioned facing, and mm -hmm. and they have to be educated to step into the arena and defend their faith, to defend the principles that we hold true. Um, it's one of the things that I love about when Masterbooks had the opportunity to publish Jake's work. It's because Jake is out there doing the work. Masterbooks doesn't, in a, in a case like this, we looked for somebody who's actually covered in the mud, uh, the, the man in the arena, that, that when he's speaking, he has <laughs> he has the um, he has the knowledge from really being in the battle, and I think that's where you know that's what I love about the fact that we have Ken Ham's projects and and a lot of different projects from people who are out there working in culture and and going after that. The course that we're talking about is Civics in the Constitution. It is a half credit one semester course. Typically, you would take like an eleventh grade course. One would be um, civics and the Constitution, the second semester of that year would be um, economics. 
And so this fits that well. I really feel this course is, is so much more than just a civics course. I, I think it really is important for families, as Jake and I were just talking about, to, um, to really train the worldview. So much of what we do and how we shape knowledge, the importance of knowledge, being thinkers, uh, you know, I mean, it's so important. So um, now, so there's 15 lectures. The lectures are about 23 minutes each. Uh, and, and it's six hours worth of video. So give me a week. What does a week look like in the course? So I'll start with lecture one. Before we even discuss the Constitution, and I think this is what a lot of parents find interesting as well, and this is also just what separates us from many of the curriculums out there. They'll just dive right into the Constitution and start talking about the branches of government. The first lecture that we do is called the American View of Law and Government. There are two opposing worldviews when it comes to government. One is called a pagan view of government, and we use a chart to do this, but that is where we make the state the divine. In other words, they're the God, the state is, um, similar to what you see in the Old Testament. And the state now has unlimited authority because who can limit God? And next, if they have unlimited authority, that's going to force state worship. Now, in the old days, they used to bow down to the state or to the king or what have you. We're a little too civilized for that nonsense now. But what we do is we look for permission from the state for everything. What can we teach our kids? How can we discipline our kids? What kind of vaccines do we give our kids? And so on and so forth. What can we do on our private property? What can we do with our personal right to bear arms? So on and so forth. These are all things that the founding fathers, that's why they threw the tea in the harbor. But this is a pagan worldview, and that results in tyranny because anything you worship outside of God will tyrannize you, including yourself. I was my own worst tyranny. Um, and that is based on evolution. So evolution says that there is a ruling class and there is a serving class, and the ruling class has evolved more than the serving class, and so therefore they should be the rulers, and the rest of us are the monkeys put on earth to serve them. There's a biblical view which opposes this view, it says that, that God is divine, and he divinely ordained government. He limited government, which produces patriotism. Our veterans are a prime example of that. Uh, they serve a limited function. They don't force you to do anything. They're just looking to take the bullet to secure your rights, which is why we love them. That produces that patriotism. And that's based, it results in a republic where everyone is under God's law, including the ruling class. The ruling class are only public servants. We get that from Romans 13, our founding fathers did. And that's based on creation. We're all created equal. These are all biblical, reformed style of thinking. It created what Daniel Webster identified as the best form of government in 6,000 years. So that that's the first Lesson. We didn't even talk about the Constitution. We just talked about the American view of law and government. Then we talk about the philosophical view. Are these men influenced by deists and Enlightenment thinkers. Well, they were influenced by men during the time of the Enlightenment and when there was a surge of deists in Europe. However, these are men like Blackstone, Locke, and Montesquieu. And all of these concepts, the, the emphasis of all of these men's writings, these men's writings, And biblical suppositions, that is what influenced our founding fathers. And then we get into the fact that um, Europe, or excuse me, Britain, or the crown, did not square with this philosophy or the biblical view that our founders had. We also talk about their religious backgrounds, their quotes, their church affiliations. You know, we study uh, that from a scientific stance, and we also do it from a philosophical stance. And that's why we declared independence. So then we walk through the Declaration of Independence, which is just as important, it preceded the Constitution as the Constitution because the Declaration is the philosophy of government. Then we enter into the Constitution. So each week we're picking apart each of these topics. We do it for 18 weeks. Uh, 15 weeks is guided by videos. The other three weeks are studying, again, founding documents, and we use a principal approach, primary source documents, not opinion. Very important that I emphasize that. This is primary source stuff. This is not stuff we have made up. We've merely discovered it and brought a modern day application to it. So is it five days a week or three? 
I would say you you're going you're going to want to do it for five days. You can probably cover the material in three. But yes, we set it out so that you can do it. You can finish one lecture per week. Okay. So you should be done in about eighteen weeks. And there is quizzes and things and and writing. You can use the syllabus for reviews and tests and so on. And that's all included. You have a teacher's manual that goes along with the student manual too. So you'll have that as the parent to be equipped with. And this is set up with the masterbooks format, everybody. So it has the um, the daily activity sheet, or well, it has the sheets in it, but it has a schedule, the lesson plan. So it's open and go. You can open the lesson day one. It'll tell you what to watch, what to look at, what activities to do. Everything is built into it from that standpoint. Um, okay. So I actually the DVD came Friday, and. Woo! Uh, the student book is was supposed to be here this morning. Uh, it, it's not. It'll be here this afternoon. Um, and then I believe the teacher guide is scheduled, I think, for next week. And so we should have that um, that coming as well. So highly, again, recommend that you check out the previews. I posted some videos of Jake on YouTube. Uh, I think, well, we might have put a preview up so that you could hear one full lesson. Um, I am so impressed by the ministry that he has and what he's been able to accomplish. Uh, and he's also, um, well, he got kicked out of school, so that just made me appeal. There's the <laughs> I didn't get kicked out of school, but I spent enough time on detention to realize the world changers didn't fit always into, into that culture. You know, it, it, that's why there are so many businessmen, these brilliant billionaires all over the world who, um, who just were failures in school, and they, they were thinkers. And sometimes yeah. school doesn't produce thinkers, and, right. and that's so important. All right, well, I have one more question for you. This is a bit of a philosophy question. Uh, you studied the Patriots and the, uh, the Founding Fathers. There's a moment where they stepped into their destiny and came alive. In our culture, when do you think that moment will happen with these kids with seeds that are being planted in that? What do you think it takes for that to happen? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And we try to stimulate that, which is part of our huge outreach, um, which we did not outreach to schools and, and youth until about five years ago. I have a background in youth ministry, so when I came on board, I wanted to emphasize that. We've created what's called American Clubs, where students can write and pontificate on these subjects and topics. I didn't think there was as many kids around the country that cared about this as there actually is. And I get the opportunity to meet them. We'll publish their writings, many of them. And I want to challenge you, too. If you have a student that, that is in love with this topic, get them in touch with us so we can get their stuff published. Because as I speak about this, I am now 40 years old. I'm just an old guy that you know knows something about something. But if you get a 12 year old that says the exact same thing I say, you know he gets 10,000 views on YouTube instantly. I want to stimulate that. And the more we can develop our youth army, my son, we do free podcasts every week. We take a topic that's in the headlines and we apply a biblical constitutional viewpoint towards it, so Americans can learn again how to think about these subjects. My 16 year old does them with me. Everywhere I go around the country, they say, oh, I love your son on there with you. Prior to that, nobody said anything because it was just me. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I do realize that this, from a cultural standpoint, is going to be one with the youth. And I've also identified a lot of homeschoolers that have, and again, it's not just limited to homeschoolers, but they have a tremendous advantage because they have less to unlearn than government school students. They're not any smarter than those kids are. They're just being taught how to think, like you said, Randy. Um, but they're running for office now, and they're getting into local legislatures. They're getting into locally elected offices, and they're just not going along. And they're not worried about risking a relationship or a political future. They're saying, no, this is wrong, or this is right. I'm going to introduce this because it's right. I don't care if there's support. I am going to oppose this because it's wrong. I don't care if I get opposed by my own party. That's the only time this is going to change. I think that's what so many people appreciate and value about our current president. I'm not certain that he really cares what anybody has to say. Now, it seems for the short term, that's really working well for us. Again, but I would caution as well, this needs to be tempered with the Constitution because Right is right, and we need to defend that. But taking that type of attitude towards it, no, that's not what it says. 
and we're not going to incrementally get there. We need to do what's right right now. Mm-hmm. I think it was Martin Luther King Jr. that made that statement. The right time to do the right thing is right now. So when that happens, when the Hebrew children and Daniel do not bow, they don't bend the knee, they don't cautiously try to compromise a different position and stay Jews while in the court, and they just behave and act as Christians are supposed to, that's when we see that turning point. Our founding fathers were prepared years earlier through the Reformation in America. These were religious men and women like Jonathan Edwards and George Whitfield who fearlessly preached the gospel. That application found its way into the pulpits, which found its way in the Black Robe Regiment, which wrote consistent letters to the king, decrying his tyranny, which then, of course, fed their congregations, which then, of course, fed the education system, which was mostly homeschooled, which then fed the minds of Jefferson, Madison, Patrick Henry, George Washington, which then developed the resistance as God placed his people in the areas That resistance then birthed the Declaration of Independence, which birthed the Constitution, which here we are. So all of that started with young people and with proclaiming that gospel. I could see that happening today. It could happen tomorrow. It may happen six months from now, but I've got my eyes peeled on the horizon. I'm expecting it to happen. And I think all of us should as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, there's courses that I think students... Students need a well-rounded education. This is uh, one of those courses that I think should be mandatory. Um, if you, as, as your students get, you know, World Religions and Cults, I think is one of our important courses for students to have. Logic by Jason Lyle, so that they can they can be trained in good good thinking and, and identifying fallacies of logic and those things. And Jake's course, Constitution, Civics and the Constitution, I think is another essential for who we are as citizens and where we are in this in this time in history. So, well, Jake, I'd like to thank you for joining me. And um, this this group of moms that we serve, uh, they you're right, they do one of the hardest jobs in discipling and training. And we can't encourage you enough to stay the course because everything you're doing is making a difference. And even if you don't see it, these seeds, you know, some seeds take sprout very quickly and, and, and bloom very quickly. And others take longer. And I can only imagine your parents, right? I've, I've as a pastor, um, and I've had a lot of experience with Teen Challenge, and I've gone to Teen Challenge with a lot of parents and the, their, their children, right, in the day of induction. Um, I can only imagine what they were thinking <laughs> and, and what they were feeling. And to know that... Um, uh, the seeds that the Lord has planted in your life to see what he's doing with that now, um, just to give hope to parents that, you know, you're planting these seeds and you don't even, you, you have no realization that they're ever going to bear fruit because sometimes it doesn't look that way when it's covered in a pile of manure. <laughs> yeah, I think you were being gracious by that last statement even. <laughs> Yeah. Me too, and I, I would like to thank the mothers as well. I want you to get this course. I think it's the best. If there was one that was better, then I would work for them. But this is this is where you as a parent, uh, we want to help you. I really do. I want to encourage you. Uh, that thought that you get every week, multiple times a week, with all of your strength, don't give up. Plant these seeds in your kids because they're going to come into those conversations when you're not around. And if they're prepared with this truth, that foundation, it's going to come out of them. They're going to turn back because God has created that structure. And parents, you are the authority. Even if they smart off and talk back, that voice remains in them as a solid foundation. And that authority will come out of them. So I just want to encourage you there. And I hope that this course can help you. We're not looking for you just to buy another course. We want to help you with this course. So, yes, there is an investment. It costs money to make these things, and it costs money to spread our message across the country. But we want this to be a help. And I believe 100% that it will be a tremendous help for you, especially on a topic that not a lot of people are excited about right now, tragically. Uh, it's, it's a way that we've made it so that you can be excited and passionate about it. Absolutely. I agree. So, good. Well, thank you, Jake. I appreciate you joining me. And Thank you, Randy. To all the moms, we pray you have a blessed week and um, that you definitely take a look at this course. I'll make sure I post links here. I'll also post links. What is the website, your your website, Jake? 
So if you go to um, instituteontheconstitution.com. Institute and on that's the a, Constitution. That's, that's correct. We also have a YouTube channel that we upload videos every week on that free blog that I was telling you about. Okay. It's, uh, that one is The American View. Yes. We teach people to think American. The American View. Okay. Yeah, and your name is spelled a little bit different there. Yeah. It's M-A-C capital A-U-L-A-Y, right? That's correct. Okay. Yes. Not your traditional M-C-C. -C. We stayed Scottish. We, we didn't yield to the Irish. <laughs> we stayed Scottish. <laughs> That's good, because I was looking, I was trying to figure it out, and then I finally, I did, so good. All right, guys. Well, hey, have a blessed week. Thank you for for watching us and allowing us the opportunity and the privilege to serve you and the mission that God has called you to. We'll talk to you later this week.